Welcome to God's Truth. I'm Dr. D. Todd Harrison as we continue to flood the world with God's truth. We welcome you today as we continue to study this year in the New Testament of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We continue to examine and look at the miracles he performed, his teachings, the doctrines he taught, and how he dealt with the false religious leaders of his day. And of that same Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I testify as one of his witnesses that he lives today. He rose from the dead with a body of flesh and bones, as he said to his apostles in that upper room, handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as you see, that I have of him, we declare to the world, the real Jesus, the biblical Jesus, the true Christian Jesus. Okay, let's look today. We'll be looking in Matthew chapter 13 and Luke chapters 8 through and 8 and 13. And so we'll turn to Matthew 13. And we'll begin here in Matthew. We're going to get a lot of parables here in this uh, chapter of Matthew. Uh, let's begin here then verse 1. Uh, the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. Why? Because he knows that if they see him, they're going to start to gather together and it would be a good opportunity to preach the gospel to a large crowd once again. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables saying, and this first one is the sower, the parable of sower. Behold, a sower went forth to sow, right? The missionaries representing the Lord Jesus Christ have gone forward to sow the uh, seeds of the gospel. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and for what they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. And so here's the great parable of the sower. And uh, Jesus is going to explain uh, this um, coming up here. And... Um, well, then we'll look, I guess, at the uh, Luke version, and then we'll look at his, I think his best explanation that they have for him is there. But basically, there's different types of people. First ones, they hear the gospel from the missionaries. They, um, you know, are excited about it. They even invite the missionaries to come back next, the next, for their next appointment, right? But then what happens, right? The devil comes along and uh, sows, you know, sows, sows doubt, sows you know, uh, uh, inspires their family members or their friends to say bad things about either the missionaries or the Christian church. And uh, so they, uh, you know, and so now they, they fall away, right? They don't want to uh, hear you the next time you go uh, to their house to, to visit them. You have others here that uh, join the church and they are, they're excited. They get baptized. And that's the end of, of their uh, church membership. You don't see them uh, in church the next week or any week uh, thereafter. You have others that get baptized or excited for a while, but they get occupied with the things of the world and uh, and work and and family and friends and uh, and uh, sporting events or any number of things, and so they drift. They drift into inactivity. And finally, you have the group that goes forward and they're faithful disciples of Christ and they serve to the best of their ability in the church and just based on their different skills. Uh, some bring forth, as he says here, uh, 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some even 100-fold. May God grant and may God bless us that we may get more of these uh, new converts that would bring forth a 100-fold. Okay, so then his disciples came unto him in verse 10 and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Remember, they were under judgment of God. Jesus said he wanted to preach to them so they, they could not hear, so they could not see the mysteries and 
the glories of the kingdom of God. They rejected it, and that's their condemnation and their judgment to have their eyes blinded and their ears uh, stopped so that they cannot hear the gospel. For so whosoever hath, and for whoever receiveth here in the JST, right, those who are excited to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, the restored gospel preached by those who hold the priesthood and authority of God or that have been sent, uh, you know, for the sisters as well, sister missionaries being sent forth through the spirit of prophecy and the laying on of hands to go forward to be the Lord's uh, missionaries. Uh, that uh, for whosoever hath to him shall be given more, right? That those who uh, accept the gospel, then after you study the scriptures, then you're given revelation, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little until you grow in all the mysteries of godliness. He says, and he shall have more abundance, but whosoever hath not or whoever does not receive and rejects the gospel, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. So soon he's out worshiping false creeds of a false heretical, heresaical a uh, false uh, the Christianity, uh, the creeds that were developed three, four hundred years after the Bible, when there was no more revelation, no prophets or apostles on earth to receive revelation from God as to the defining the character and the attributes and uh, of, of God. And so they create their own God in their own image and Jesus Christ in their own image and the image of philosophy created. Uh, uh, th th they him, right? And they reject the Jesus of the Bible. They reject the biblical uh, Jesus for this God of the philosophers who they worship because they refuse to hear and to accept the true gospel of Jesus Christ. That's their condemnation and their judgment. He delivered them over to their false beliefs. He says here in 13, therefore speak I to them in parables, because seeing they don't see, and hearing they don't hear, neither do they understand, because they don't want to see. They don't want to hear, and they don't want to understand the true gospel of Jesus Christ. They want to reject it, because as Jesus would say, their deeds are evil. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, by hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. So in fulfillment of this prophecy of Isaiah, that the people would be like that when Christ ministered among them. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them, right? But they don't want to be healed. They want to keep their eyes closed and their ears stopped. But blessed are your eyes, the 12 apostles, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. You 12 are following me in my ministry. You want to hear. You want to receive more. You want to learn more about the mysteries of godliness. For verily I say unto you, many prophets and apostles of old, throughout all 4,000 years of the Old Testament, uh, he said, uh, have desired to see those things which you have seen and have not seen them, right? They they dreamed of the day that Jesus would come and all oh, how they wished that they could have been one of his 12 apostles. And to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them, hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not or receiveth it not here, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed in, into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and Anna with joy receiveth it, yet hath not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, somebody says some false thing about the church, by and by he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he become unfruitful. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and wants to understand it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven 
is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field, right? So the kingdom of heaven, remember the kingdom is always the church. That's all the way through all the gospels, uh, the, the, through the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Book of Mormon, Dr. Covenants, the kingdom of God is the church. Christ's bride is the church. So the church is like the man which sowed good seed in his field. But while man slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. So once the gospel was restored, Jesus and God left for a time being uh, as, though, as, as though they're sleeping, right? And in the meantime, the enemy comes, the devil comes along and starts to bring. As we continue to extend the gospel to everybody, we're bringing in tares with the wheat. We're bringing in evil people with evil hearts. And they start to become members of the church and they start to say false things about the church and start to cause doubts and divisions and teach erroneous things, you know, all in fulfillment of these uh, scriptures. Uh, you know, so sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So as the church grew, you have the wheat and the tares. You have some very wicked people now in the church saying false, uh, uh, abominable thing. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst, thou, uh, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? For whence then hath it tares, right? We thought we were bringing in good people into the church. Why are there all these evil people in the church? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. Satan, Lucifer, uh, hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root also up the wheat with them. He knows that some are going to convert from their wicked ways and turn from their work, wicked ways and become a righteous saint. And so until the point of time of his second coming, he's not going to destroy the wicked yet that are among the church. Let both grow together until the harvest, the second coming. And in the time of the second coming, I will say to the reapers, gather you together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. What happens to the wicked members of the church? They shall be burned with fire. This is not the first time he said this. This is not the last time he has said this. But gather the wheat into my barn. And he says another parable put he forth to them, saying the kingdom of heaven or the church is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. 1836 official members of the church. Now we've got millions spread throughout the world, and we continue to grow each year in all kinds of different countries. It says the... the, the it was meant to, 32, which indeed is the least of all seeds, six members. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs. It's the greatest. It's the richest church in the world now. It's the strongest church in the world. It's, it's got nice places of worship, and it continues to grow in strength and in power. He says here, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof, right? Soon one day there's going to be a time coming in which many uh, these uh, false abominable, uh, in the words of Jesus Christ, the uh, false abominable uh, heresaical Christians will try to come. Uh, they'll be struggling in their churches. They won't be able to afford to uh, help their own members to take care of themselves, to eat, uh, to have jobs. And so they will come into the church of Jesus Christ and therefore ask to be, as he says here, to lodge in the branches thereof, come to the church, ask for money, for welfare, uh, for things like that. That day will be coming very shortly and not so many years from now. Another parable spake ye unto them, the kingdom of heaven is like unto Levin, which a woman took and hid in three measures a meal till the whole was leavened. So the church is like is like three measures a meal. You've got three kingdoms of glory. You've got the telestial people, the terrestrial people, and the celestial people, all within the church. All three levels are represented. 34, all these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, 
and without a multitude, without a parable, spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which is spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. So again, fulfilling this prophecy. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto him, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. And also the missionaries as they go forward to represent him, teaching the word of God. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world or second coming. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. They shall be burned with fire. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. A kingdom again, the church, right? The church. The Son of Man, Jesus Christ, shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his church all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. And we continue to see every year more and more of these people within the church. They make a lot of, they try to make a lot of noise on, <laughs> on social media. The day is coming in which they shall be burned, according to the Lord Jesus Christ. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. They shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun. In the kingdom of their father, celestial kingdom of God, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to treasure hid in a field. So the church is like a, a treasure hid in a field, right? Still only uh, 16, 17 million members out of how many billion people in the world? Seven, eight billion. So it's, it's hard to find the church, right? It's like a treasure hid in a field that which when a man hath found it, he hideth and for joy thereof, goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. We saw that in the 1800s as the gospel was restored to the earth. The people were willing to give up all that they had to travel by boat across the oceans and travel all across land in order to come into the church. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it, right? The true converts, the true Christians of God, those who love Jesus are willing to give everything for membership in his church and kingdom upon the earth. Again, the kingdom of heaven or the church is like unto a net. And that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, right? As we go forward, we're barely knowing the people for only a short period of time. We can't make decisions whether they're going to be righteous members or wicked members of the church. So we just gather them all in. Which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels. They cast the bad away, which will happen at his second coming, as we said here. So shall be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from the just and shall cast them into furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Again, this is the real Jesus Christ, not the false one being preached in the media and the preached in public, in the public square, right? That he just loves everybody. He just lets everybody do all their wicked activities. No, this is the real Jesus. Likes to burn people with fire, likes to cut off their heads, dismember them. All of these uh, very graphic things. We saw it in uh, Malachi. He likes to take uh, 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 waste uh, from, uh, from uh, you know, to take the animal's waste, their, uh, their dung, and wipe people's faces with it. That's the real Jesus, the real Jesus of the Bible. If you actually read it, that's the real Jesus. So they shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Later, Jesus is going to say, oh, how he wishes the fire had already started, right? Have you understood all these things? They said unto him, yea, Lord. 52, then said he unto them. Therefore, every scribe, here we go, always attacking false religious 
leaders for the damn people's souls to hell. They lead them astray. And Jesus hates false religious leaders more than he hates anything else. Then he said unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is in a householder is bringing forth out of his treasure things new and old. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. Now he's got, we're going to get it later on in, uh, in Luke where he's going to start to call him names again and really go after him. So Matthew, for some reason, decides to stop it short there. Look where we can get the fuller uh, uh, details there. And when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence had this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son, right? We talked to before many times about that. Uh, Jesus, they owned the, the largest carpentry store in their uh, in their city. Everybody knew them. This is the carpenter. This is the carpenter's son. They were all carpenters in that in that village, right? They were all going off to work at building that great city, Sepphoris, there in the Galilee, right? They were all carpenters. The reason they this is the carpenter because they all know him. They all probably worked for Joseph at some point in time was they're starting their their trade and. His, and um, and is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas. So again, very clear Catholic church. Wake up, read Matthew 13. These are not cousins of <laughs> the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know where you came up with such false doctrine, but it needs to be uh, rejected. Uh, you need to repent of, of that and actually read the Bible for a change, right? He says, these are the brothers of Jesus Christ, right? And three of them are apostles, James, Simon, and Judas. Joseph's not apostle, most likely because Jesus needed somebody to take over the carpentry the business that they had. And Joseph was, was the one that, that was called to, to do that. Okay. And his sister. So we had sisters too, Catholic Church. Wake up, read. Matthew 13, 56. Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. Yeah, prophet is is, is honored by people, right? As long as not in his own uh, country, his own house, his own family, and these sort of things. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Because they didn't believe he chose not to do a lot of miracles there in that uh, village. Okay, Matthew 13. Let's look now at Luke. Luke chapter 8. Okay, Luke chapter 8. We'll first look at verse 1 and then 4 through 25. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing glad tidings of the kingdom of God. Now, what are these glad tidings of the kingdom of God? He is causing the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk. He's casting out devils. These are the glad, uh, as it says here, the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the 12 were with him. Verse 4. And when much people were gathered together and would come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. And so now he goes ahead and, and teaches that. Parable of the sower, I, I guess we technically just looked at that uh, in Matthew's version, so maybe we can actually uh, uh, go ahead and, and skip that here. Um, let's just look at his explanation here in verse 10. And he said, unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the others in parables, that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, right? They, unless they should believe and be saved. So Satan's the one doing this. He wants to cause them to have doubts before that second meeting with the missionaries because he does not want them to be saved. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away not just persecution as matthew said but in times of temptation they they commit a little sin right instead of repenting of that sin 
you know, they, they start to feel that maybe they're not worthy to be members of the church and they fall into inactivity. And they that uh, which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, cover it with a vessel and put it under a bed, but sets on a candlestick that they might enter, that they which enter in might see the light. Okay, so then he says here in verse 19, then came to him his mother and his brethren and could not come at him for the press. We saw this in other, uh, uh, in, in other weeks. What's the problem? Three of these brethren are apostles. Where are they? Where, where are they, right? Meaning that nine out of the 12 are with Jesus right now, hearing and listening to Jesus, right? Three, for some reason, are not there with Jesus, right? And his mother, she should have been there too, listening to him. He says now in verse 22, now it came to pass. Uh, so, in the, uh, and it was told in verse 20. And it was told him by certain which said, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to see thee. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. So not just hear the word of God, but do it. Oh, you heretical, heretical Christians ought to pay attention here again. Let's read Luke chapter 8. And, uh, and here in uh, uh, verse 21, his mother and his brother and those which hear the word of God and do it. They don't just hear and claim that they believe and just claim that they accept Jesus as the Savior. They actually do what Jesus told them to do. That's how you're saved. That's the biblical doctrine. That's biblical Christianity. You would think you only have to believe and only have to have faith in Jesus without doing what Jesus said. You're an heir. You're an apostasy. You're not a Christian, and you're not a biblical Christian. You need to repent, come unto the biblical Jesus, and be saved. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. And he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forward. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came a storm on the wind of the lake. We saw this previously too. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him saying, Master, Master, we're going to die. <laughs> then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased. And there was calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they being afraid wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Okay, so now we get the swine story again, where they 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 land on the land here, and then the, the devil, this possessed man, comes out with the devil, and they bow down to Jesus, and oh, Jesus, Son of God, have you come here early to torment us before the appointed judgment day? Uh, just let us enter into the body of these swine, right? Which they should not be raising swine, swine or pigs. It's totally contrary to the law of Moses. So therefore, Jesus is fine with the pigs being killed because they should not be raising his pigs in the first place. It's against God's law to do so. So he casts out this, this devils out of this man into the swine. The swine run down the hill and drown. Uh, let's pick up in 37. And uh, they go and they and they tell uh, the uh, so the people that were uh, in charge of watching these swine they run into the village and the city and they tell them what's going on so they all come running out verse thirty seven then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about him besought him to depart from them for they were taken with great fear and he went up into the ship and returned back again and one of those saddest scriptures in the in the, the biblical text in the in the bible where a whole group of people flatly reject jesus christ and tell him to depart from them and he honored that right he immediately 
left. And so it is with the wicked. They don't want to follow Jesus. They want to reject him from their lives. He will just immediately get back into the ship and, and sail away. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, right? So this man was very grateful now. He fully, a full true convert of Jesus Christ. He wanted to be with him. He wanted to be, well, you know, with the 12 apostles to go forth with Jesus in his ministry and to, you know, and, and to teach the, the word of God, right? And, uh, you know, then today we have a lot of people who, who just sit back in, in the back, you know, in the back seat of the, of the chapel, in the back seat of, of church and think, well, you know, if they, you know, if they called me to be one of the 12 apostles, maybe then I would go forward and, and, and serve and, and these things. Right. But it's not that way. Right. Uh, uh, that he that has desires to preach the God, uh, preach the word of God are already called to the work as the doctrine and covenant says. And so here we see that what's going to happen, right? He wanted to be with them. He thought he needed to be one of the 12 to perform a great work for Jesus and thanking him. Uh, for delivering them from these devils. But watch watch this. Watch what happens here in the next verse. Jesus says, Return to thine own house and show him how great things God hath done unto thee. Right? So here's your opportunity, right? Don't cut you don't need to come with us. You don't need to be one of the well, one of my twelve apostles. I'm going to perform even a greater work through you than I'm going to perform through these twelve apostles. Watch this. So he tells them, go to your own house and show them how great things God has done to you. But he knows this man's heart. He knows what he's going to do. The basic command is just go share the gospel with your family, right? And so it is today. But what does he do instead? He doesn't just share the gospel of Jesus with his own family. What does he do? And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. And it came to pass that when Jesus returned to that city, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. More powerful than any of the 12 apostles. When he sent the 12 apostles out on, on their ministry, they didn't baptize it. You know, I mean, they said, oh, Jesus, you know, we're happy that the devils were subject to us and so forth. But they didn't convert a whole city. They didn't have a whole city prepared to receive Jesus, gladly waiting for Jesus to come back, right? This man, Jesus, was able to use better than he was able to use any of these 12 apostles. Really marvelous uh, teaching and, and lesson here in these verses. This guy was a great disciple of Jesus, and he went forward and was, and was more of an apostle than the 12 apostles. He was a stronger witness of Jesus Christ than these 12 apostles were at that time. And he converted this whole city and had this whole city lined up ready to receive Jesus Christ is a wonderful uh, uh, lesson here. Okay, and so the uh, let's see. So now they go on about Jairus's daughter and uh, healing her from the dead. Um, let's look here at the end of eight, fifty-two to fifty-five. And all wept and bewailed her, but he said, "Weep not; she is not dead, but sleepeth." We looked at this in detail. Uh, in a previous lesson, and they laughed him to scorn, knowing what, that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called her, saying, Maid, arise. And so we must do today. We have loud voices on social media and other platforms that are out laughing at the uh, Christians and the members of the Church of Jesus Christ and, uh, you know, mocking them and laughing at them. We need to do, you need to do what Jesus did uh, right here, right? As you, is you put them all out. As they're laughing at you, you put them all out, don't pay attention to them, and you go forward and you heal the sick and you raise the dead and you do the the, the works of Jesus for him and his church and kingdom upon the earth. Okay, let's look now at the chapter 13 of Luke. Okay, chapter 13, we'll look at 1 through uh, 17. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. So Pilate, one time during one of these uh, little revolts, little rebellions, got some of these Galileans that were rebelling against the Rome, and he 
killed them, mingled their blood with the uh, sacrifices in the temple. And Jesus answered, said unto them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things, right? The fact that God allowed them to be captured and to be tortured and to have their blood sprinkled with the sacrifices, do you think it was because they were wicked? I tell you nay, but except ye repent. Ye shall all likewise perish. He already promised that he's going to burn them with fire, right? So he's again going back to that. He will burn them with fire, right? They shall perish likewise. Or those 18 upon whom the Tower of Siloam fell in Jerusalem. The tower fell and killed 18 people and slew them. Do you think that they were sinners above all men that dwelled in Jerusalem just because this tower fell on them and crushed them and killed them? I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Ye shall all have building a tower fall down on your heads, crush you to death. He sp um, spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none, right? Jesus came unto his church and was expecting to find fruit, but he didn't find any fruit. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I've come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it to the ground? And he answered, said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, that I shall dig about it and dung it. Right. So here he's going after one of uh, the prophet at the time of this. He's saying, look, prophet, you're the one in charge. Well, you know, let's, they're not listening to you. And he says, look, let me do it. I'm going to work hard this time. I've been lazy. I haven't been uh, preaching as hard as I should be. I'm going to go forward now, and uh, and I'm going to really do something great. Till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. Right? Give me one more chance with these people. Right? I'm going to go forward. I'm going to work harder, to, harder now than I've been doing. I'm going to preach harder than I've been doing. And he says, uh, and he was... T uh, in verse 10, and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could no wise lift herself up. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. He was mad, right? Because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. And said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work. <laughs> in them, therefore, come and be healed. But <laughs> don't come on the Sabbath day to be healed. <laughs> so false religious leader doesn't know the difference between the, the works of God and the works of man. Six days shalt thou perform the works of man in obtaining a, a, a living for your family and to su supply their needs, but not the work of God. The work of God never sleeps, nor, nor rests. Then the Lord answered him and said, Thou hypocrite. Remember, again, fitting that model. What does Jesus always do with a false religious leader? He calls him names, right? He's a great name caller. Thou hypocrite. Doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound low these 18 years, be loose from this bow on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, right? They finally, they finally got it. The light bulb went off in their heads. And all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Then said he unto, what is the kingdom of God like? And whereunto shall I reassemble it? And, and then we get with the mustard seed here once again. Let's look at 22. And he went through the cities and villages teaching and, journal, and, and, and journeying toward Jerusalem, right? He knows the big moment of his life. The reason he came was to suffer in the Garden of Gethsemane and upon the, cro uh, the cross. And to Calvary, and so he look at his purpose is very purposeful all the way to the end, right? He's going through the cities and villages teaching, and on his journey toward his ultimate uh, glory by being lifted up upon the cross. 23 through 35. 
Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And here's his answer, right? A lot of people often wonder that. Is there just going to be a few people that are saved? And the answer, he's going to answer it here, right? Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able to do it. When once the master of the house has risen up and has shut the door, and he began to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Then shall he begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. We already saw this in Matthew uh, chapter 7, that first the religious leaders are going to get this treatment, right? They're going to be condemned to go in the outer darkness where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. They then appeal their judgment unto the chief judge, Jesus Christ, and they say, Jesus, but in your name we perform miracles. In your name we taught the, the gospel. We did all these things for you. Then I shall say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I don't know you, right? Because they did it without his authority. They were not called to do so. He did not ask them to do it. They rejected the fullness of the gospel. They only taught uh, crumbs, a little bit of partial truth here, a little partial truth there, mingled in with false creeds and abominable heresies. And so he departs, he cast them and uh, demands that they depart from his presence. Well, here's the uh, members of the church that are were not fully faithful, right? He's going to say the same thing to them, you workers of iniquity. I didn't, I don't know you. Yes, you claimed you, you, you were in my presence and that uh, you ate my presence and, and you heard me in the streets, but you did not come unto me with a fullness of heart. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Always insulting, always name calling to the wicked and false religious leaders. So, you workers of iniquity is his name calling here. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you shall see Abraham, your dream come true. You always dreamed about being in heaven with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your, and your ancestors. And all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves are thrust out. Very powerful imagery, this, right? That, that I don't know, on some kind of uh, uh, internet, or some sort of advanced uh, internet uh, the. Uh, a type of uh, object in the future, they will. He, he will give them the glimpse of what could have been theirs. They will not, not be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven, but they will see it. They will see it on you know some sort of advanced device. They will see the people with the prophets and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets and all the righteous saints enjoying their life in the kingdom of heaven. And they will know that they were cast out from that due to their own selves, their own refusal to acknowledge and to obey Jesus Christ, to come unto his true church and kingdom upon the earth. And they are thrust out, but they will see it. He will give them a glimpse. Uh, we don't know whether this is just one or two glimpses or whether they will always have the opportunity to see the people enjoying their lives in the celestial kingdom of our God. But See it, they will, according to the scripture. Okay, so then he says here, and behold, they are last which shall be first, right? Uh, uh, the uh, Gentiles shall be saved, uh, where his Jewish people, expecting that he expected that they would be the ones that would be saved, right? but most of them are going to be reject, were rejected because they rejected him. And so the Gentiles shall be first. And these first shall be last. The Jews shall be the last ones to enter the kingdom of heaven. The same day there came certain of the Pharisees, saying unto him, Get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. It's probably Joseph, Arimathea, and Nicodemus, and who knows what other Pharisees are trying to warn him that, hey, you know, uh, your, your Herod's going to kill you here. Please, you got you got to get out save, save yourself here. And he said unto them, as he always does, right? We see this many times. Great name calling. He's the greatest name caller in all of history, right? Here we go. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox. <laughs> go ye and tell that fox. Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. 
Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. As long as I'm in Galilee here, he can't touch me, he can't hurt me, he can't kill me. Once I go to Jerusalem, it's a whole nother game. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered you, your children together as a hand doth gather her broad under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I say unto you, you shall not see me until the day come, until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. When does that happen? When all the nations of the earth are gathered around Jerusalem, ready to destroy it. And they're saying, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Please, Messiah, after all these years, we're about to be wiped out. Come and save us. And at that very moment, Jesus comes, lands on the Mount of Olives. Mount of Olives splits in half. He gets out. He's, you know, puts, destroys all their, all their enemies. You know, then they come up. What are these wounds in your hands and in your feet? And I'll tell them that these are the wounds I suffered in the hands of my friends. Your ancestors killed me. I am the Jesus Christ that was lift, lifted up. I am the Son of God, your Messiah, your Savior, your all. What a great lesson once again in listening to the words of Jesus Christ and seeing once again his miracles that he performed. Oh, how I love the Lord Jesus Christ, and I love to bring him unto you. We issue you an invitation directly from the Lord Jesus Christ. His invitation is to all throughout all the world to come, come unto him. Accept him as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Exercise your faith in him. Repent of your sins. Be baptized by those who actually hold his priesthood and authority of God, those who he has actually commissioned and authorized to go forward and baptize in his name so that that baptism shall be counted both on earth and in heaven. And the description of this video, we will leave a, a, a link. Just click on it. Let the missionaries know you're ready to accept Jesus Christ and be baptized by his true missionaries. And they will come forward and help you prepare yourself to enter the waters of baptism, to take upon yourself the name of Jesus Christ, becoming a Christian. To become a Christian, you need to take upon yourselves the name of Jesus Christ. That can only be done beginning at the time of, a, of baptism. Baptism can only be performed by those who hold the priesthood and authority of God if it is to be counted in heaven and on earth. So to become a Christian, you need to be baptized by those who hold the priesthood and authority of God, taking upon yourselves the name of Jesus Christ. He will then give you the great gift of the gift of the Holy Ghost, which can be your constant companion, lead you in the path of righteousness throughout the rest of your life. He will bless you with joy, with happiness, with love. He will open the gates of heaven to you where you shall enter, where no eye has seen, no ear heard, neither have entered in the heart of man the great things God has prepared for those who love him and accepted him and did his will. Of these things we testify to you this day, and also we invite those of you who fall into inactivity in the church to come on back, come back to the saints of God and become part of the community once again of his kingdom, the kingdom of God on earth in preparation for the kingdom of God in heaven. Of these things we, we testify to you this day and ask God to bless you with food to eat, with safe shelter overhead, with the basic financial resources you need to carry out your, uh, his will for you in your life here upon the earth. Now, these things in the name, we, we leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.